but of course, you know, you can't simply say, well, let's stop uh, with the fossil fuels, let's stop with the energy. That the the uh, fossil fuels are what fueled the Industrial Revolution, what allowed the world to dispense with slavery. When uh, the um, Industrial Revolution um, allowed machines to uh, provide enormous amount of work, one one uh, gallon of gasoline contains a few hundred, the, the um, uh, about 400 hours of labor by an adult, healthy adult. So the uh, fossil fuels were extremely useful in raising the standards of living. Um, you need, you need uh, energy if you want to have uh, high standards of living. Uh, but what's hap what's happening is almost all of our energy is coming from fossil fuels, coal, oil, and gas. And um, you know, regardless of what you hear from the politicians, we're not solving the problem. The uh, fossil fuel use, if we're going to stabilize climate, it actually has to decrease fairly rapidly. And instead, it's increasing. Um, maybe the rate of growth is slowing down a bit, uh, but uh, uh, it actually has to, to decrease rapidly, and that's not happening. And it, in good part, it's because there are still parts of the world where they're trying to raise their people out of poverty. China has done a, a good job of raising the standard of living over the last a couple of decades. India now wants to follow the same path, and their population is going to pass that of China's within, um, within the next few years. Uh, and they're getting most of their energy, not only from fossil fuels, but most of it is from coal, which is the most carbon intensive of the uh, fossil fuels. And there's plenty more in the ground. We actually have to phase down, if we want to stabilize climate, we've already burned most of the carbon that we can afford to burn. We're going to need to decrease emissions, but there's enough in the ground to you know, completely uh, destroy the planet. Uh, so we need an alternatives. And th there's another side to this, uh, talking about human health. Uh, there's a very interesting experiment done inadvertently in China when the uh, Chinese government provided free coal to people north, in the north half of China uh, for heating during the winter. And what it then, and this continued for several decades. And so that, then they have the data to see the impact of that. And it reduced the life expectancy by five and a half years. Just the um, uh, breathing in of the air pollution from uh, burning, uh, burning coal. And we now have uh, studies of the World Health Organization which show that uh, more than uh, three and a half million people a year are dying from outdoor air pollution. Uh, most of this associated with uh, fossil fuels. Uh, both uh, respiratory problems and uh, cardiac problems because the, the small particles that are produced are actually, when you breathe them in, they actually get into the bloodstream. Um, so that's more than 10,000 people a day are dying from the outdoor air pollution. 
And a similar number are dying from indoor air pollution, which again, a significant fraction of that is from fossil fuel burning. If we look at the uh, cumulative emissions, the climate change is caused not by today's emissions, but by the total emissions over time. And if we look at the cumulative emissions of the different countries, what we see is that countries like the United States and United Kingdom and Germany are 10 times more responsible for um, the climate change than countries like China and India. Even though China and India are now number one and number three in emissions, um, historically their emissions were not so large. So, uh, in this new book, which is almost finished, I want young people to understand that they have the potential to actually change uh, this system, but they need to understand, and we need to use the scientific method, uh, which I already discussed. Um, the crucial requirement is Abundant, clean, carbon-free energy. And this is not going to happen unless you have uh, alternatives which are economically competitive with uh, the fossil fuels. Here's an example of, you know, doing the same experiment and getting the same result and not understanding it. About uh, 25, 35 years ago, uh, the case was made very effectively by Amory Lovins. Uh, very persuasively, I should say, that, uh, well, if you pay attention to energy efficiency, uh, that uh, you can do away with the fossil fuels. He says you don't need large hydro, you don't need nuclear power, you don't need uh, fossil fuels. And so he had this plan, and that basically is what the liberal side of our political spectrum has been following. You know, I've tried to talk to people like Al Gore and others, <laughs> but they're come totally under the sway of Amory Lovins. And yet I keep making this graph and showing, well, Amory's plan is this dash dot curve, uh, See if this works. Uh, you, well, you can see that the dash dot curve was the plan for what the renewables were going to provide, the, the um, soft renewables, not including hydro. Even though we're very heavily subsidized renewables, and I'm not against renewables, they're, they're part of the solution. My barn is covered with solar panels, but uh, that's not enough, and renewables are intermittent. Um, so we're not solving the problem. We're pretending that we're solving the problem, but we're not. So the critical element in the solution is you have to make the price of fossil fuels include their cost to society. And that means the human health cost and the climate change costs. And the, the way to do that, the practical way to do that would be to collect a fee instead from the fossil fuel companies collected at the source, the mine or the port of entry. But instead, what we're doing is subsidizing. We're actually, we're actually paying these fossil fuel companies to deliver us this stuff which is causing the problem. 
Um, if we want to move to clean energies, we have to make the prices honest. You've got to include the cost of society in the cost of the fossil fuels. And uh, one way to do that, and I think the only practical way, is to collect a fee from the fossil fuel companies. But that's going to make gasoline at the pump become more expensive. Electricity, if it's generated by coal, it's going to become more expensive. So give the money that you collect to the public, an equal amount to all legal residents, and that way those people that pay attention to their fossil fuel use will actually make money. In fact, with the present distribution of energy, 70% of the people would come out ahead if you distribute the money uniformly. Uh, and this is a progressive uh, fee because low-income people don't have as big a carbon footprint as wealthy people who have bigger houses and who travel more. Uh, so it, it has some social benefit as well as being the only way we're going to phase down uh, fossil fuels and replace them with clean energies. And this is a very transparent, uh, it's a market-based uh, solution, which conservatives actually favor. It's just that our conservative party in the United States is totally dominated by fossil fuel money. Um, so it, even though the thought leaders in the conservative side actually favor this, and you may have seen uh, people like uh, James Baker III and and uh, George Schultz, the old, old conservatives, who actually come out and, th and they're arguing for carbon fee and dividend, exactly the policy that we've been pushing for uh, 12 years, uh, because it's a conservative approach. Let the, let the market uh, help you find the most efficient ways uh, to move off of fossil fuels. And that it stimulates the economy, and the economic studies show that in the United States it would generate a few million new jobs. Um, and this is the only international, the viable international solution, because uh, uh, you can put if the United States would do this, we would then put border duties on products from countries that don't have an equivalent carbon fee, and that would be a big incentive for them to have their own uh, carbon fee so that um, they could collect the money themselves rather than have us collect it. But in addition, you do still need some regulations in certain cases, and you also you do need to support uh, technology development, the long lead uh, research, development, and demonstration. 